Minswap V2 has launched and in this video, I'll take you through how to migrate your liquidity from the V1 smart contracts to the V2 smart contracts. And this will allow you to take advantage of uh, collecting all these fees that will be going through the protocol. It's a lot faster, so trading is gonna be a lot more optimized and we're gonna see a lot more interest in the Cardano ecosystem for sure. So let's get right into it. If this is your first time here, I'm Peter Bui. I cover everything in the Cardano ecosystem, news, updates, tutorials, all that to keep you informed and up to date with all the things happening from all these projects building in the Cardano ecosystem. If you like that kind of stuff, give me that thumbs up, subscribe, notification, and I will make sure you're up to date with everything that you need to know. So this is the big announcement here. So congratulations to the MinSwap team. It's been a long time coming. This DEX, this new version of the DEX has been double audited once by Certec and the second by Anastasia Labs, a powerhouse in the Kidana ecosystem. It's also been open source for a month and a bug bounty program has been running for a while too to try and find any other bugs or vulnerabilities in the platform. So it's been thoroughly looked at via the Kidana ecosystem and security auditors too. So this is a really good state of where the DEX is at the moment. One of the really nice advantages at the moment too is that they've dropped the uh, batcher fee at the moment. So it used to be two ADAs and now it's dropped down to one ADA. So all these trades going through the platform will save on their fees. And this is a growing trend in the ecosystem at the moment. We're pushing down these batch of fees so that uh, the DEX aggregators and all that uh, try and prioritize those fees so that uh, traders get a better trade out of it. And we have also seen uh, DEX Hunter already integrate in the V2 smart contracts on their platform too. So if you're using DEX Hunter, you will be seeing your uh, trades route through the uh, brand new smart contracts for the MinSwap uh, ecosystem. So hopefully there we'll see uh, better trades as well because things are just getting cheaper and cheaper. Now this is one of the things that uh, we need to look into. Like I was saying, we need to migrate this liquidity over. So as more trades go through the decks, another meme coin rush, whatever it might be, the liquidity has to be in the right place so everyone can optimize their trades and earn those fees from the platform itself. There has been a few posts online asking, is it safe? Should I be doing this now? Uh, what are the gotchas here? And I'll highlight some of those for you. Now the MinSwap team have put out a thread here that will help take you through the process. I highly encourage you to read over that as well. Now I'll be showing you how to automatically migrate your liquidity over with one of my pools and then I'll also show you the manual process too. Now the manual process is probably the nicer way. It is a few more steps but it's a good way of doing it because all the assets remain in your custody and you can control the price that it's uh, going back into the current new pool. So with the automated one, it will move the liquidity from V1 to V2. And during this process, there's a short period when funds are removed from the V1 and being added to the V2 where the MinSwap Labs acts as an intermediary. So it actually uh, resides in their wallets before it's moved over to the V2 uh, protocol. And this is because it does it in batches, in small increments so that you can get the best price possible. If it moves it all in one big go, there may be slippage and you may not get the best price within the movement of those uh, liquidity tokens from one protocol to the other. So it's good to have an awareness around that and know exactly what's happening there. The other thing that you may notice as well, if you're zapping in liquidity into some of these uh, V2 liquidity pools at the moment, there might not be much liquidity in those pools and you may suffer from a really big price impact as well. So make sure if you're doing a zap in where you're selling your tokens and buying the ADA pair for it, it, it may have an effect there. So it's something to be aware of when you're doing the zap in. If you see a massive price impact when you're zapping, pull back and do that uh, liquidity addition manually. Yeah, buy the ADA as you would, uh, maybe from a V1 pool and then add it to the V2 pool. So let's go through this process. The first thing you need to do obviously is connect your wallet. I'm using my test NAMI wallet here with a whole bunch of assets in there. So that's all connected. You'll see if you do have any V1 liquidity on your wallet, it'll prompt you to start migrating this. You can also get to it from the top navigation menu if you hover over the ellipses here and click on migration. So here on this screen, you can see two liquidity pools. I have Fluid Tokens and ADA, and this one's actually staked into the pool. So I'm farming for a Rewards. This one here is a dot ADA pool. It's also in V1, 
but it's not staked. And there's also no liquidity on the V2 side yet either. So I have to do a complete manual migration here and create the V2 version of this pool. So no one else has created it yet. There isn't much dot in the Cardano ecosystem. So I'm gonna do that as well. So let's have a look at this one here. I'm gonna click on migrate. And there's a whole bunch of warnings here and do take these into account. So this automated liquidity migration from V1 to V2 requires an intermediary during the process, MinSwap Labs, to handle the temporary custody of the assets. You can also manually do this migration process. There is a chance that the V2 price may vary slightly from the V1 price because of the price volatility as they are separate pools. The process may be affected by the slippage tolerance setting currently 0.5% to make adjustments, please click here. So you can adjust this here. So if you want uh, less slippage tolerance, you can put that down to 0.1. So you won't lose as many assets uh, because of uh, slippage, or you can keep it at the default 0.5. So your order will actually go through. So here, I'm gonna keep it at 0.5 in this case. Now there's two more notes here. This process can involve adding up to 20 positions per migration and may require up to 10 minutes to complete. And the safest approach, you can migrate liquidity manually by withdrawing LP from V1 and then depositing into the V2. And I'll show you that afterwards, like I said. So yes, I understand all these warnings and I'm just going to migrate these ones automatically. So I'll click on that. Now here, I will need to sign a transaction and what's going out is my Fluid Tokens uh, LBE NFT, which is assigned to this and some ADA assets that will be required for this particular transaction deposit of the assets. So let me just sign that and there it goes. So now that will be submitted back to the DEX and it will start processing that migration from V1 to V2. Now remember that liquidity there was also being farmed and it's a two-step process for moving that liquidity. One, I had to do the automatic migration, and two, I had to restake that LP to start farming it again. So I will have to go back and start farming that. So here you can actually see the process happening. You can see my fluid tokens, my ADA being withdrawn here in this particular process, and that's already been complete. And now it's being deposited into the V2, uh, version of the pool and this is just pending at the moment so we can watch this live as it all happens and there we go it's done so now that is now um, being added to the v2 version of the liquidity pool there of course now i need to farm that as well now i'm um, in that process i also have to mention it also pulled out my liquidity rewards from farming that in that pool. So I would have had that deposited into my wallet too. And I'll just check that in my wallet transaction. And indeed I can see the rewards here. I've got min tokens 433 and then my fluid tokens there, uh, 247 fluid tokens. So I can do something with that here. I can add more of that liquidity to the V2 pool uh, so I can start farming and earn more rewards there. So that's really cool that I have uh, got that in there or I can sell it and you know take a little profit at this point. So let's have a look at my liquidity and I should see my newly moved liquidity uh, in there and, and there it is there. So that's my fluid token ADA as a V2 pool. Great, fantastic. Now the next thing I need to do is put that back into a farm and get it to work again. So here I'm going to look and see what my options are here. I could add in that uh, little bit of ADA and fluid token that I earned. So I can max that and add in the ADA alongside it. Uh, but I'll think about that. I may sell some and take some profits at this point. But let's go back in and farm this. So I can click on now farming, click on the fluid tokens pool. There it is. Uh, liquidity bootstrapping farm. That looks like the farm that I need to be in. So I'm going to click on stake, click on hundred percent. Yes, that all looks correct. And then click on stake. So that now I'll use my fluid tokens, LBE NFT, which will allow me to stake it in there. There's a little bit of a fee here that I need to pay to move that in. So I'm going to sign this transaction and there we go. So now that liquidity uh, will hit the blockchain and then uh, be staked back into that particular farm. I can earn those farming rewards again. Really quick process. And that took me just under five minutes to complete that entire process there of moving from the V1 pool to the V2 and then start farming again to earn those rewards. Okay, so now let's go back to the other pool I have there. So you can see this one, fluid token one is already done. Here I have my dot ADA pool and I can't automatically migrate this. So let's go through a manual process. So I'll go back here and look at my liquidity. 
there it is there. So I've got uh, 44, 44 and a half ADA's worth of liquidity. So I'm going to manually do this one. Click on remove and I'll remove 100% of this liquidity. Everything there looks okay to me. Sign the transaction and away it goes. So now I've just got to wait for that to hit my wallet again and then I can create a new liquidity pool with those assets I've just taken out. So let me see, I've had 22 ADA with uh, 1.46 dots. So I'm gonna add in that exact amount. So there I can see my order, it's just pending at the moment. So that will just take a little bit of time. Great, so now that's all done. So I'm gonna add that liquidity back in. So 24.29 and 1.46. So I'll click on earn and liquidity. And then here I can now deposit that in. So a lot of people usually like to use that zap in feature here so they can just type in the amount of ADA they want to use and then it will automatically uh, buy the asset on the other end. But because we don't have the asset on the other end, we have to do this all manually. So let's go deposit. Now let's get those numbers again. It was 22.3, so just a little bit rounded up. And then on the other side here, I'll need to choose dot. And it's essentially all of my dot balance there. So I can go max. Uh, let's type in the amount of ADA again here. So 2.3. There we go. So it's not a huge amount of value here, but that is exactly what I want. Now, the other thing I can do here is because this is a brand new pool that I'm creating, I can set the trading fees of this. Now I'll keep it at the default of 0.3 here. That's pretty common for um, all the pools uh, on across any DeFi ecosystem. So that all looks good to me. Let's create this new pool. Yep, just check it's on V2. Another transaction's coming up and everything there looks good. And transaction submitted. Oh, and there we go. So there's my liquidity. So it's already gone through. It went through uh, without me even noticing. So I can see it there now. Uh, the amount of ADA is just the same. And that's pretty much where I started before with 44 ADA worth of liquidity within the liquidity pool for dot ADA. Cool. That's it. Now this one, there is no extra farming rewards for this particular uh, asset pair at the moment. So I can't farm that as I did with the fluid tokens one, uh, but you can. Uh, at least provide liquidity with that particular trading pair and you can see now how to do it manually. So hopefully I've gone through the process there and it's easy enough to understand how to move that liquidity over automatically and then refarm if you need to or do it manually by withdrawing that asset and then putting it back in via the trading pairs. Make sure you keep track of the amount of asset that you're withdrawing and putting back in so that it's the exact same amount. So if you're uh, like I did there in that manual process, I, I watched how much dot I had, I watched how much ADA I had and made sure it was the same, essentially the same amount going back in as well. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Also, you can contact the Mintop team. I know they'll be more than happy to help you with this migration process. Migrating the liquidity over to the V2 smart contracts benefits everyone in the Cardano ecosystem. If you enjoyed this piece of content, if you learned something new, please consider giving me that thumbs up, hit subscribe, click on the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.